Hey tubers, Daniel here. Today, I'm on a train. Arriving on track number one is train number six, the California number, final destination, <laughs> Chicago, Illinois. Here we go. My friend Benny and I are on a three day cross country Amtrak train trip uh, from Emeryville, California, which is near Oakland, to Chicago. It's a three day trip, it's supposed to be 52 hours. And this train is the Amtrak Zephyr. What we have here is the Roomette Sleeper. So you can you can ride coach, which is just like, you know, riding a, a, in like a sort of bus seat. You can do a Roomette Sleeper, you can do a family sleeper, and then there's some larger private sleepers that just cost a whole lot of money. And it's uh, nice and cozy, is one way to put it. Um, but it's comfortable enough, and I thought I'd make a little video for you guys, you know, just to try to give you an idea of the scale, and uh, otherwise just kind of give you a sense of what it's like to be on a train for three days. So I can really only show you show you the uh, the roomette because that's what we have, and uh, it is nice and cozy. It's definitely livable. Uh, we you know have gone through the first night, and we both managed to get some sleep. Um, but as you're about to see, it's more like a small bunk uh, than an actual room. So let me show you some stuff. There's a little tray that pops up here. Folds down. These two parts open up. And this is actually large enough to put a laptop on. Or whatever else you want. You can have a bite to eat here. Uh, and actually there's they're sort of faint, but there's actually a checkerboard pattern here. So if you wanted to play chess or checkers, um, I think you just go ask the attendant and they have pieces. They also have lots of board games and cards cards and card games and stuff like that. So one of the things I was having trouble with was getting an idea of the scale of these rooms from some of the other YouTube videos I watched. And so I'm just going to try to do my best and give you a sense of how big it is. I've got kind of a wide angle lens on here to help out with that. Basically what you have here is two opposing seats that are about the width of a, a love seat or something like that. And so this roomette is for two people. Now these bottom two chairs, they actually fold down into a bunk. And I'm going to show you that here in a minute. And then up above these chairs, you've got another bunk which folds down. If you can see that there. So there's a handle right here. You lift up and pull down. And so, if you can kind of imagine, this is going to turn into two bunk beds, basically, with a pretty small amount of room to maneuver around in. And in fact, this right here, these are the two steps that you use to crawl up to the top bunk. There's a couple of different control panels here. Uh, you can turn lights on and off. There's a couple of vents you can adjust. Um, there's a way to call the attendant. Same thing over here. And each individual cabin has its own temper temperature control. We've had sort of mixed results with this temperature control panel. Um, whether or not the train is moving seems to have a fairly large impact on, on how warm it gets inside here. But we've got ours cranked all the way down. And the air comes in through this vent right here. There are a number of places to sort of stow away little bags and stuff like that, but really there's not anywhere in this roomette that's large enough to put a normal sort of carry-on bag that you would usually sort of carry on an airplane. Got some hooks up there for backpacks. One over here as well. There's another sort of small shelf space here, a little trash can underneath. But again, these are the steps to the upper bunk. So you won't be putting a lot of stuff on there. Luckily, there's a little storage compartment downstairs where we keep our luggage, and I'll show you that as well. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to tra do the transformation in this room and convert this room from two seats to two beds. So the first thing you got to do is turn these bottom two seats into the bottom bunk here. What you do is you push that. How do you do it? That? Yeah. 
and then you gotta pull it. You need to push down on top. Push down on yeah. top. And while pushing that, pushing that lever down. The... Oh, while pushing the lever. Yeah. Oh shit, it's kind of hard. Yeah. So I'm gonna get my assistant Benny here, <laughs> and this is now our what fifth take yep. to try to do this to try to convert this bottom uh, chair here into the one half of the cot at the bottom. So Benny, go ahead and show us what you need to do. Just got a lever down there. Push down the top. Fight with it. It's not actually easy. <laughs> okay, and uh, we can skip the other side, but you get the idea. That chair basically folds down. So Benny, why don't you uh, why don't you show us how to take this top bunk down as well here? All right. So there's a lever right here. You just basically lift it up, huh? and that unlocks it. You bring it down, and you bring it all the way down until it closes. Wow. Um, these two belts right here, you, know, you might need it, you might not, but you kind of hook it up here. And that's to keep you from and falling off. keep you from falling off. <laughs> Alright, so I want to show you guys how to get up on this bunk, because there's actually a few ways to do it. And now, actually, I don't even remember what the right way to do it is. You do this first. Just. Do a roll maneuver. There you are on the bunk. So. That's the top right there. It's not very big. So don't come up here unless you're ready to go to sleep. Next thing I want to do here is show you how big each of the cars are. So I'm starting at one end, going across the coupling from one car to the other. And this is the beginning of our sleeper car. So there's two person bunks on each side here. And over here we got Benny. Hello. And so half this car is these two person bunks. In the middle, there's various amenities. There's usually juice, it's trash, uh, coffee, water, ice. And let's go down these stairs. These are pretty narrow stairs, by the way, if you can't tell. Down this way, that half of the car is more uh, two-person rooms, and then there's a family room at the end. Over here you've got some, some space to put luggage. cool looking train stuff here. And this middle section here is where the doors are. Depending on which side the platform is on, one, or, one of these two doors will open here. And then the other half of this is the same as the other half on the bottom on the other side, um, except We've got two bathrooms and one shower here, and then a family room at the end. I'm gonna do my best here to try to show you the size of the bathrooms. This is a lot like an airplane laboratory. It's a little bit bigger, I think. A little bit more sink space, mostly. Um, and it, but it's got a kind of similar high pressure flushing system. And believe it or not, there are showers. Take a look in here. And this is the smallest shower I've ever been in. Um, but I've never been in a shower or any kind of moving vehicle, so this is a first for me. Um, it's relatively clean and functional, but it's pretty tight quarters, you know, getting undressed and and then the whole time the train is moving around. So it's kind of hard to keep your balance. But hey, there's a shower. Pretty cool. All right, let's go back upstairs. So here I, am, here I am back at the middle of the top of this sleeper car here. This is where the amenities are. And so the other half of the top here, these are all family rooms. I think they're all four-person family rooms. Just gonna walk all the way down so you can see how far it is. And then once you get to the end, 
Got another set of doors. And there's another sleeping car. And this sleeping car is identical to the other one, except it's turned the other way, I think. Next up, I'm going to walk through the diner car, the lounge car, and then one of the coach cars, and I'm not going to talk through it as to not disturb others, but you can just take a look. give you an idea of what the uh, motion is like on the train here. This is a coupling between two of the cars. And you can see they kind of move around kind of a lot there. So as far as I can tell, there are two engines at the front. There is a staff car where the crew sleeps and does their thing. Uh, then there are either two or three coach cars. we say two. Uh, there is a there's the lounge car with the observation deck and then there's the diner car. Uh, there are three sleeper cars and I think that's it except for the very last one which is actually some kind of vintage sleeper car. Um, and one of the other train buff guys told me that it was probably built sometime in the 40s. Um, so I'll try to get a picture of that. And that's it. That's the Amtrak, Amtrak Zephyr. Where are we right now? We're almost to Grand Junction, right? Yeah, right now we're in uh, Coop County. And we're running somewhere between four, like four and a half hours Four and a half hours late. Yeah, maybe <laughs> close to five now. Yeah, unfortunately, Amtrak is uh, notoriously late to their destinations. Although it didn't help that someone drove up their car and abandoned it on the rails, and the conductor had to emergency stop the train. And I suppose we narrowly averted a major crisis. <laughs> um, that happened in the middle of the night, so I wasn't awake when it happened, but I did remember waking up at one point because we're slowing down really fast. So what do you think of Amtrak, Benny? 
I like it. It's about what I expected. Um, a lot of relaxing, uh, meeting a whole bunch of different people, especially during the dining hours. Uh, yeah. Who's the favorite person? Your favorite person that you met? Favorite person. I don't know, actually, I think our uh, the person that's taking care of us in our car is pretty cool. Stephanie's awesome. Stephanie, yeah. Um, and who who's the worst one? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's this kind of basement dwelling like dude. Oh uh, yeah, I can't quite figure him out. Yeah. So, so far, we got he, he camps on his laptop. Uh, on the same. Basically, one hundred percent of the time, he's on his laptop in the lounge, taking up most of the table. Yeah. And, and he's that, got that one corner table, so he has like. Yeah, so he's, and then he's got, so no one can see his monitor. And then yeah. he's got two mobile phones, a mobile hotspot, and he's been wearing the same, same clothes. clothes for the whole time. And, and the clothes is kind of like faded and dirty. And he's like with. a total mess. Yeah. And then, uh, and then when we, the one time we ate with him, he like almost, you know, he was like, ate his food real quick, paid and left. Yep. Didn't say anything. It's yeah, really the antisocial. Other, yeah, the, the other guy. That we talked to was actually, you know, yeah, we got to talk to people, but yeah, I guess like, yeah, just, it, just that one person was just kind of like, uh, you guys work in high tech, and that's right? that's the <laughs> entire that's the only thing he said, <laughs> yeah, so and it kind of seems like maybe he does too, but yeah, I don't know. Oh, and then I and then I went and asked him if I could borrow a, a USB to a USB mini cable, and and he didn't even let me in, like ask the question he was just like nope 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 don't have it nope can't help you <laughs> so it's like wow okay anyway this is what uh, Illinois and Iowa have both looked like just miles and miles and miles of corn and soy yep yeah it seems like um, once you pass Denver then it starts getting kind of boring yeah but yeah, the color, the Rockies, the Colorado River, um, that's definitely a highlight of the trip, I would say, even more so than the Sierra Nevadas. Um, I guess for me, it was more impressive for the uh, Rockies because um, I do, I've made the trips through the Sierra Nevadas quite a bit, so, but never really the Rockies, so being able to see like the canyons, the rivers, um, the people on the river that like to, uh, I guess, uh, moon oh yeah the passengers i missed that yeah <laughs> now i just want you to sit back and enjoy some of the sights and sounds of the train Check out that train in the, behind us. If you want to get a Reno, I might hop off and. Uh, oh, the little the caboose car. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, just like you know. The guy said it was made in the forties, so. Yeah. Not the, not to go in, but just to. Yeah, just look at it. Get it. It's like yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. Hop on board if you want. Check it out. <laughs> See if we can smooth our way in. Yep. I don't think it's gonna happen. No, neither do I. <laughs> 